Welcome back to the penultimate episode of this fifth season in the Youth Academy Road to Glory. We're looking for your fan objectives for next season, please, in the comments section. We're also looking for your kit suggestions as per the last episode as well. There's a link in the comment section, or sorry, a link in the description of that video. I may put it in the description of this video as well with regards uh, your kit suggestions. Do go and reply to that tweet with your options. We have Newcastle to start today. And then we follow that up with a sim against Chelsea at home, followed by Leicester at home, and then Crystal Palace also actually at home. So we're spending the majority of this of the uh, of the remainder of the season in familiar surroundings. But we start with quite a lengthy trip up to the northeast of England to go and play Newcastle at St James's Park. In the league, we are 11 points from the relegation zone, and to be fair, Leicester are eight points from even 17th. It's very tight, actually, from 17th up. We're just very lucky that there have been three clear sides this season that haven't been up to standard. Villa, not even close. And Palace and Leicester, just not able to hang on to the, the bottom group slightly above the relegation zone. We're only three points above 17th. And there's only four points between 11th and 17th. So... If they'd have been a little bit better, then absolutely we'd be in a massive relegation fight. At the minute, though, it does look like we're relatively safe. But a couple more wins today would certainly go a long way to ensuring that. And actually, with Leicester and Palace as two of our opponents today, we could guarantee survival in today's episode. This might be result-dependent. The last episode of the, of the season, then, perhaps. Wait and see how things pan out. Do drop the video a like if you're enjoying, though. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the remainder of this season or, of course, season six when it comes. But for now, we're going to concentrate on the Magpies. Newcastle aren't great. Will Hillier in goal, Patreon players. Juan Mario, Reese Oxford, Medibo Sanyo and Fabio Martins at the back. Longstaff and aging Verratti and Kone. Qual, Berardi and Dybala. They've got quality in there with Kone, Dybala, Verratti. It's not much else in there. To be fair, willing goal is 85 rated, so certainly good enough for sure. But there's still a lack of quality in a number of key areas for Newcastle. You would have expected them to have had a stronger squad by this stage in a save, unless the money has somehow run out for them at St. James's Park, although I highly doubt that will ever be the case. We should be able to hold on for a point against this team, though. 13 points above us. So, to be fair, we're we're about as close to Newcastle, wherever they are in the league, as we are to the relegation zone, meaning that we're not expected to get relegated. So certainly we might be capable of getting a draw here. If I can find Edwards with this ball, then we could get more than a draw. Fleming, shoot, pal! Brilliant double save from Will Hillier. And that ensures that we don't take the lead here. Can't believe I haven't scored. He's just gotten slightly worse at 34. Salinas did the defender. He's in the box. It's going to take quite a bit to beat Will Hillier today, evidently. That is for sure. Edwards with the delivery. Can Murphy get to it? No. Samaras could hit that first time. It's fallen to Fleming on his favoured left, but he's put it well into the stand. Edwards looking for the runner. Salinas. Fleming's in the middle again. Unusual position for Salinas to be so far wide, but oh, it's a lovely turn by Samaras. And then Sagnon does well to put a foot in. Definitely the more dominant side. And Newcastle can't seem to get the ball out of their half at the minute, let alone stand a chance of scoring a goal at the other end. Edwards wins it well, but can't direct it quite as well as he needed to to Salinas. That's a big save by Richardson. The defenders on their heels. The striker on his toes in between the gap. And a good hand from the keeper ensures that Newcastle don't take a 1-0 lead. I would say it would be undeserved because they have had some offensive play in the opening 10 minutes then we've definitely had a spell of pressure ourselves but they're the ones to take the lead Quoll, their right winger buries that in the top corner from the second phase of play from the set piece Newcastle are now in front that's intercepted by Ferreira and given away poorly Rady dinks it Dybala on his left that would have been a hell of a goal Awkward, clumsy save from Richardson, but 
turns it behind nonetheless. Schultz again. I lift it looking for Edwards. It could bring this down. He's done very well. And there's the option out wide. Not an ideal ball, but finds him regardless. Samaras. Salinas is the intended target. Salinas found. I just can't pull the trigger. We've had chances in this game. And absolutely, the keeper has made a couple of very good saves. But equally, we haven't been as deadly by pulling the trigger when we could do in a number of other opportunities as well. Schultz, Salinas, short there too. Bustamante, and we will get it back out towards Schultz, who's nodded it up. Oh, it's a lovely ball. And Salinas turns well. Samaras doesn't score many, but that's an important one. Just squeezing it in the bottom corner, and we're level against Newcastle here at St. James's Park. He's one of the players that has always, in the past two seasons, been on the brink of maybe getting moved out of the starting lineup and onto the bench. But he somehow always stays the execution. That's a lovely finish. We're level here. That's a very good goal. We'll take it. Manu Kone. Sean Longstaff. Dybala. I worked so hard to find the equaliser. And then within moments, Paolo Dybala goes and sends Newcastle back in front. Salinas. Out to Fleming. Samaras again. Fleming again, he's on his left, Edwards is in the middle, Edwards arriving, he gets to the header and it's straight at the goalkeeper. We could have scored again within moments of conceding. Nice block but still force free for Newcastle, Longstaff to Verratti and Dybala given away, one back again and Manu Kone can't finish it off, scrambling it anyway will do in these final few moments. To try and ensure we get it away and don't concede one more. I mean, Ferreira. Oh, the right back. Nearly sent through on goal. But we're going to lose this at St. James's Park by two goals to one. We had spells where we were on top. They equally had spells where they enjoyed the lion's share of possession and chance creation. And they took their opportunity and we didn't. Six chances each. Two taken for them. That's a defeat for us to start the day. We could still absolutely guarantee survival today if other results go our way. 10 points the gap to the relegation zone. 15 points available for Leicester City. 18 points available for Crystal Palace. One of these scout reports are coming in from, I think this is going to be yeah, Australia. We've had no luck here whatsoever yet. And it appears that's probably going to be the case again. Some players are growing quite well in the Youth Academy, though. Alessandro Silva, 84 to 94 potential. Hopefully we can get some more growth out of him before the end of the season. Akpan is up one as well and continually technically looks uh, quite impressive for his age. Paz, I'm still keeping him as a centre mid rather than changing him to a cam for the time being. His finishing is only 50, so it's not like it makes a massive difference. Uh, Paco Alvarez up one with the position change is still growing nicely and then the rest have good potential windows apart from Schroeder who looks like he's going to be absolute dirt. Uh, they all have good potential windows but they're a long way from them at this particular moment in time. Let's concentrate on things closer to and in fact at home. Here against Chelsea. Chelsea in the box, deflected and it's fortunate for them. Wahi buries it. And Chelsea take an early second half lead with just the second shot of the game, let alone just for them. Second shot of the game. It's 2-0 Chelsea. Wahi at it again. A double for him and a treble for Chelsea in terms of points earned. This will be another defeat at home for us this season, which will take our tally up to six of the eight we are allowed in the hunt for the objective. We'll see if we can pull it off. But we're not going to pull anything else off here at Patreon Park for the rest of this game, that's for sure. We are, however, at home for the next two as well. And with relegation threatened Leicester and Palace, we might even be able to actually physically relegate them. And we've pulled one back through Salinas. That will add another to his goal contributions for the season. But unfortunately, it's not going to be enough here for us today. The final whistle goes literally immediately 
after that goal goes in. I'll update the fan objectives and then we'll crack on. Leicester City have a side that really are too good to go down. But we said that last time when they were in the championship with us last season. Kefren Turam is 85. Jeremy Pino is 87. Sven Botman is 87. Rodri is 85. They've got their whole defence is 80 plus. Even who sets in goal isn't spectacular. Jebison up top isn't great either. And you imagine that's the core of their issues. We can't relegate them officially today. But we can put them within one point of going down. And then depending on results, we absolutely could relegate Crystal Palace in our very next game. And that is why they're going to go down. Because Jebison up top for them is not good enough. Lodi with a throw. Onside, Jeremy Pino. Oh, is that going? That would have been embarrassing. Murphy did something like that in a previous game where his touch wasn't quite good enough to actually fully intercept the ball and it carried on going. I think it was against Leeds where they then just nodded it in behind him. And he very nearly had something similar there that ended up in a different manner having the opposition score. Half an hour in, it's... Oh, God, that was terrible as well from Murphy. Half an hour in, it's nil-nil here, but Leicester are trying their best. And Rodri with a great first touch. And support around the outside from Kadiolu Knocks in the way and a much firmer touch this time. Still Leicester press. 33rd minute here. They are all but down. But they are fighting. Turam. And Jeremy Pino. Oh, it's a lovely ball into the path of Torres. He's come off the bench here. Into the middle. Jebison, side netting only. No goal. Leicester's two best chance is falling to Daniel Jebison. But he hasn't been able to put away either of them. And from that, oh, we could maybe have gone and taken a 1 0 lead if we went for an excellent tackle by Neko and Perez. And then Kefren Turam has gifted the ball back to us. Here's Fleming trying to spin. He's done that very well. Edwards, look at the space. It's McDonald in the box. That's 1-0 AFC Chesnoid. And that might be not the final nail in Leicester's relegation coffin. But one of the final nails that could very well put them in a position where they need 12 points from the final 12 points to even stand a chance of staying up. I think Leicester are going down. Torres. Oh, it's poor. Can't really look anywhere other than themselves, can they, Leicester? They have fought very hard for the majority of this game and then thrown it away. Oh! <laughs> Nearly known goal as well, just to make matters even more embarrassing for them. Free kick for Leicester. Cadiolu. Off for Christiansen for them. Daniel Jebison also now leaving the field of play for Tawanda Maswanise. Not a name I've seen before, if I'm honest. Oh, and put over the top of his own net by Mitch Backer. Varela to take the corner then for Leicester with six minutes remaining. And their Premier League status hanging in the balance. And it gets closer and closer to falling out the bottom of the league. As the minutes and seconds tick by. Four minutes added on at the end of the game. And Leicester are in. Pino has the option square. And Maswanise has saved Leicester's doom. Perhaps for just one more match day. A late equaliser for the Foxes. They do still look destined for the championship once more. But... They've a bit more to hang on to now, thanks to that really last gasp, 93rd minute equaliser from the man off the bench. Oh, I'm annoyed. <laughs> I'm really annoyed to have conceded so late against the side that we had chances to put away and put to bed. But never mind. We'll take the point. We'll head into the game against Crystal Palace. We might not have relegated Leicester City. But we certainly can relegate Crystal Palace, I'm sure. Palace, 11 
points from safety with 12 points available. Anything other than a Crystal Palace victory here at Patreon Park seals their fate. Anything other than a Leicester City win ensures that we are safe as well. With Palace to play next, we can not only seal there, but our survival as well. Or fate, I should say. Seal our survival and their relegation, should we be able to get this over the line. Crystal Palace, the side that could seal their fate to the championship today. Our former Mateo Fernandez in goal for them. Mandragora and Jusby Hall in the holding roles with Bakayoko, Asta Vranck and Hannes Wolf. Behind Lorenzo Luca, the big, tall, six foot, seven odd man. The defense isn't bad. Elistondo in there is definitely decent, 82 rated. But Palace's team is 100% worse than Leicester's. And they're lower than Leicester in the league. But still, both sides look like they're doomed. And we could seal Palace's fate today with victory. Even with just a draw, Palace could go down. But Edwards is in here. Heavy touch takes him a little bit too far wide. Neto! Oh, Mateo. Good stop, Mr. Fernandez. Fair play. Edwards with the delivery. Can I get to it first? It's going to fall. Murphy! Just couldn't get it under control. And Palace will clear away. Oh, he's done me there, Dante. He's going to run the full length of the pitch. Crystal Palace, only 30 goals in 34 games. Make that 31 in 35. A very similar mistake from the defender to that that we saw against Leeds. Where they get there, but don't get a solid enough touch on it. And it falls free to a opposition player. Take nothing away from the finish, though. That is top quality. But another defensive mistake by Mitch Backer has me wondering whether, having peaked to 76 rated, he's the man to be the defensive rock moving forward as Murphy's continued to grow and now is higher rated than Mitch Backer. We've seen mistakes from Mitch this season. Is his time in the starting lineup coming to an end? Are we going to need to look elsewhere to improve in that position? next season if we want to consider ourselves capable of challenging further up the league we're level though and Fleming has notched to cancel out that mistake from Mitch Backer and it's 1-1 sorry Crystal Palace you still might go down Mandragora back to Kin and Dewsbury all again Luca with the back heel you'd want your striker to go all the way surely oh Nacho been a little while since Nacho scored I think hasn't it his goals have certainly dried up of late. Although, to be fair, they were flowing much better earlier in the season than we thought they would anyway. So he's still got a great goal scoring and goal creating tally for the season. Please be on side. Please be on side. Please be on side. Thank you. Dink inside. Edwards. Nacho! As soon as I say that Crystal Palace don't score, they score. As soon as I say Nacho's goals have dried up, he nets as well. 2-1, we've turned it round. Edwards looking for Nacho in behind. Oh, how's your touch? Nacho Salinas. Should have buried it. I could have taken it maybe one more touch. I didn't want to run straight into the keeper. He seemed rather reluctant, actually, in the end, to come off his line. Made a good save there, though. It was he or Dante, I think, that kept that out. Not sure which. Salinas underneath this one, though. That'll fall for Sam Aras. And across here to Bustamante. Well blocked. We'll keep it alive. Through there to Samaras. Quickly on. Shoots! Nine. Turn nicely. Edwards. Oh, Tom Edwards is sensational. If we do drop Backer from the starting lineup and sign someone else, he'll be taking the captain's armband. That touch and turn is just insane. And the finish. Actually, that was just outside the box. Lads, one finesse shot from outside the box in five seasons. We've finally done it. 
Kiyoko skips away from the challenge really nicely. As the French gives in the box. And they've pulled another one back here, Crystal Palace. This is turning into quite the game. It's not the final day, but there's still everything to play for. Crystal Palace pull it back to 3-2 in the 41st minute. Five goals in this first half so far. This is turning into an absolute Premier League classic, isn't it? That is a solid tackle from Hannes Wolf as well. They could make it 3-3 before half-time. Jewsbury Hall into Vransk. They have put it back to 3-3 before half-time. Mandragora buries it. And I thought when we went 3-1 up, the Crystal Palace were going to go down without a fight. They are still swinging wildly. It's 3-3. Not even at half-time yet. Salinas... Schultz again. He's got a very good goal earlier this season, but he's not been spectacular, Schultz. He has gotten better, though, the more I've used him, I have to be honest. I've been not necessarily getting in products with Schultz, but I've been less frustrated with him. I was going to go as far as to say I've been enjoying using him. I don't know as I've enjoyed using him, but I've been less frustrated by him, for sure. I am frustrated, however, by the way that Crystal Palace are apparently picking me apart at will in this game since going 3-1 down. They've completely turned the game on its head. Salinas, quick, sharp turn. Terrible pass. And still, Crystal Palace could get themselves back in it. Branch again. Bakayoko. Dewsbury Hall. Samaras tracking back to get stuck in. You can see the amount of white shirts that are forward here for Crystal Palace trying desperately to get themselves back in the game. We'll look for shoots through that gap. It's found well. Lasso can't seal Palace's fate not done yet. Edwards with the delivery. Murphy's going to try and get there. He does. The header was off target. We'll keep it alive through Samaras. And Edwards. Ow. Oh, Murphy's done well to pick up the loose ball. And Bustamante. Oh, and I can't find Schultz. Looking for a seventh goal in this game, but it's not presenting itself yet. There's Dante. Through the legs of the defender. Bakayoko. Palace want to stay in the Prem. 4-3 from 3-1 down. They now lead with relegation looming. They're saying not today. How many minutes added on? That's what we're asking. Just two. To be fair, the, only one of the seven... Only two of the eight goals scored... In this second half, 3-3 at half time, and it's Luca that has stood up and been counted for Crystal Palace here. Their Premier League survival fight goes on for one more match day. They might, almost certainly will, still go down, but that is the goal that ensures that they have one more, maybe two or three more chances at keeping themselves in the Premier League. A hat-trick for Lorenzo Luca. If only he'd done that more times throughout the course of the season, they might not be where they are in the table this season, Crystal Palace. If other results have gone against them, they may still go down today. Leicester lose. That's them absolutely relegated now, I believe. Have a look at the league table. We've dropped to, uh, to 16th. We are 10 points clear of Leicester with 9 points available. We are safe. Leicester and Palace, eight points to Fulham, nine points available. They're not gone yet. We have Fulham in the next game. Monthly scout reports on their way from Argentina and from Nigeria. But the season finale rumbles on, or does it? Do we need to have a full season finale? episode in the next one or can we just comfortably sim the next three games because we're relatively comfortable where we are a number of players called up right at the death there to see if maybe there's something in there for any of them that's a firm no for you sir i do apologize uh unai lozano at center back good physicals but lacking technically and at 17 i'm gonna say no to him as well Hassan, Godwin Hassan. Good acceleration, agility and balance. Sprint speed's nearly there. Short passing's pretty dead. 
but, but, but crossing's decent though. Maybe more of a mid than a winger? I don't know. He's only 15 though, so we'll give him time to improve. And then Amos is... Not the one, I don't think, unfortunately for him. Sorry, pal. Hassan will put a thing on. We'll try and get him up to uh, actually improve as a winger. But I tell you what, there's probably no point playing all of tomorrow's games, all of, sorry, the remaining three games in an episode tomorrow because we in ourselves are safe. So I'll, ad I'll advance game at a time, but rather than do the interactive sim where still it doesn't matter, we'll do it game at a time. We beat Fulham, which might keep the re relegation fight alive. We're up to 13th with that win. Oh, and Leicester and Palace are still yet to play. Don't tell me they play each other at some point. No, Leicester have got Tottenham away. Crystal Palace have Newcastle. They need to win every remaining game if they're to stay up. And they haven't. Palace draw. Leicester lose. They're both relegated as a result. So the league table with regards who is going down is decided what position they'll be in 18th and 19th we're not sure at the top end the title is still up for grabs between Liverpool and Manchester United top four is still there potentially for Arsenal if they can overhaul Chelsea in fourth Chelsea could get themselves up to third in fact but we have Manchester City in our next game but we'll just advance until after this the final game and we'll see we lose 4-1 to City dang and we beat Brighton on the final day. So we get six more points. We'll be thrilled with that. And the final league table in the Premier League looks as follows. Leicester lose again. Palace are victorious on the final day. But they are down by three points. Fulham survive. At the top end of the table, Liverpool win the league with Manchester United. Second, City go third. Chelsea do hold on in fourth and Arsenal fifth. Spurs in sixth. For them, Europa League football for Tottenham Hotspur, Conference League football for Newcastle United, and we are safe in 14th on 44 points. I'm going to go and advance until the end of all of the competitions, update the fan objectives, and we'll have a full season roundup. So let's have a full season roundup then, shall we? The competitions we were involved in, how our players did, how every other league that we're interested in went down, and of course, Objectives, fan objectives, and plans for next season. Relegated, unfortunately, for Aston Villa, Leicester City, and Crystal Palace, as we saw today. And you've seen the top end of the Premier League as well. We showed you that slightly earlier on. The FA Cup, then, was won by Chelsea in the end. We, of course, were knocked out, unfortunately, by Arsenal. In the Carabao Cup, Manchester City won that competition. UEFA Super Cup, PSG. The Champions League was won by Atleti in an all-Madrid derby. The Europa League, Roma over Manchester United. And the Conference League, Sporting over Villarreal. We're not expecting to challenge for Europe next year. We'd love to, but I think this is going to be a slower move up the league table than usual saves, if we're completely honest. So with regards to player stats in the division we're in, Top goal scorer is Wahi for Chelsea with 31 this season. Salinas is in there with 20 in 38, so he did have a fantastic season in the end. Uh, were there any other, actually, AFC players in there? I wonder if Edwards made the list. He did with 14 goals. Congratulations, Tom Edwards. He also headed the creative charts with 14 assists to go with his 14 goals. Salinas got 12 as well to go with his 20. Fleming got eight as well. He certainly became more and more influential as the season went on. And Golden Glove, Richardson with just seven clean sheets in the league, but still came fourth, or at technically joint second. The clean sheets in the Premier League this season, IRL, were like 16, was it? 13, 14, 15, 16-ish. Only eight was enough to win the Golden Glove this year in the Premier League. Goals everywhere this season with regards the other leagues that uh, are around Europe that we're intrigued by coming up from the championship to join us in the Premier League next year are Wolves and Bournemouth you would imagine Watford as well if they win the playoffs 
107 points and not getting promoted would be probably some sort of record. West Brom, Sunderland and Norwich will fight them though tooth and nail for the chance to be in the Premier League next year. Relegated are Plymouth, Derby and Oxford. Peterborough survived by two points. Plymouth on 34. In League One, Blackpool and Wickham promoted to the Championship with Barnsley, Portsmouth, Ipswich and Millwall in the playoffs. Cambridge survived again. Wigan, Swindon, Shrewsbury and Salford down to League Two. With Walsall, Lincoln and Exeter all getting automatic promotion to the champion to League One, sorry, should I say Northampton, Crawley, Donny, and Port Vale battling it out for a chance to get back to League One via the playoffs and relegated to the National League, Tranmere Rovers and Hartlepool in League uh, Nice from Lille from PSG. Nice to see a change there. In the Bundesliga, it's Dortmund from Bayern, able to do it here, unlike real life. Inter in Italy from Juve, Napoli only 7th this year's real life Serie A winners of course. In the SPL, Celtic from Hearts, Rangers only 3rd. And in La Liga, Barcelona from Valencia. Atletico Madrid only ninth, ninth for Atletico Madrid, but they did win the Champions League. So maybe that keeps Diego Simeone in a job. I'm not sure to be completely honest. With regards our objectives this year as a team, uh, we were able to do both of the youth objectives. Didn't keep 10 clean, this se 10 clean sheets this season, unfortunately. Seven in the league and one in other competitions. Didn't sign a crucial uh, forward or midfield player, but we may well be doing that next season. Uh, evidently didn't do that either. Did avoid relegation. Did reach around a 16 of the FA Cup. Did, within two seasons for the long term, finish mid-table as well. So delighted with that. But what that means for us next year, objective-wise, in the Premier League, I'm not sure. With regards, fan objectives then. We lost to Palace at home. We lost to City at home in the Sim. And that was our eighth of eight allowed league defeats this season. Delighted to have managed to tick that box. Only eight defeats at home from a potential 19 in our first season at this level. We got 44 points, which was enough to see us up. We beat the magical mark. As it turns out, Crystal Palace got 33, so even only 10 points less would have guaranteed us the opportunity to still be in the Premier League next year. Nacho Salinas got 32 of 20 needed goal contributions this year. 20 goals, 12 assists. We got one finesse from outside the box. We beat Villa twice, Nottingham Forest once, and Leicester we weren't able to beat at all. And then I didn't, unfortunately, win a manager of the month, but nor were we really expecting to. So please do keep your fun objective suggestions coming in for next season. Our squad then. Firstly, let's do stats. Salinas, top goal scorer. Edwards actually not that far behind. And then... A number of others chipping in, but certainly we are a two-man team when it comes to scoring goals. Tom Edwards, still potential to be special. We are going to have to significantly improve next year if we want to keep him. But I'm starting to think that Nacho Salinas and Tom Edwards are going to be one club players in this save. So important have they been throughout the course of this save for us so far. You can see all of the other... Goal scorers for us, even Jacek Vilk was able to get one in the Premier League since joining in January. Creatively, Edwards and Salinas again. Fleming, though, a lot of assists for him this season, so I'm really pleased with that. Lasse Schultz, to be fair to him, two goals, five assists, even though it took me a while to warm to him. And Bustamante, only the two assists in 38 games, 35 in the Prem. Maybe, maybe we improve at centre mid again. Jacek Vilk, I am tempted with his stats as they are, to develop him as a backup striker and then look to sign elsewhere. 16 weeks to striker. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make Vilk a striker and look to sign another centre mid next season. So, our squad then as it stands all told this season, both at the club and loanees. Richardson peaked now at 79. Again, we hope dynamic potential kicks in. Fernandez is up 3-70. to 70. Houghton, I think, is leaving us at the end of the season? No. But 
uh, still 71 rated and up three. Silver asked to be called up. We'll look to loan him next year. Ziegler is leaving us on loan next season. Knox has peaked at 74. If dynamic potential doesn't kick in next year, I will look to upgrade on him as well. De Costa's up five out on loan, hoping that that can continue with another year's loan spell. Lopez is up six. Again, similarly, hoping that can continue with another year's loan. Gibbons is up two to 71. Good enough to be back up. Murphy up six to 79. Backer up two and peaked. New centre-back next season, I think, for me. Backer to the bench. Gibbons may be... Still kept his back up whilst we wait for De Costa and Lopez to continue to grow. And then Gibbons will be sold and De Costa will come into the first team fray. Cooper up six, right back, still not quite good enough. Carvalho up three, right back, still not quite good enough, unfortunately. McMillan. <clears throat> McMillan. Sounded exactly the same. McMillan up two to 72. I don't know what's going to happen with him, but probably alone if we do upgrade on Knox unless Ferreira leaves at 83 and a player that doesn't stand out massively in gameplay I'd be open to letting him leave if someone comes in for him and then McMillan would take over at right back or we'd look perhaps to sign the one we've got on the shortlist actually Hutchison will take Lavery's role in the squad Lavery leaving us Hutchison up three this year hopefully continues to grow Fleming up four continues to grow will be my starting left mid next year. Rosher up seven. Hopefully continues to grow with another loan spell. Maya up nine. Hopefully continues to grow with another loan spell. Yamada up five. Same. Lima up nine. Same. Paz asks to be called up. We'll loan him. Castro I will look to sell next year. Vilk we're retraining at striker. Samaras and Bustamante will stay on as they are. Wilson, another year's loan, up five. Jenkins, I'm probably just going to sell him now. Novak, up two to 73. Back where he was. Will probably be my backup cam still next year, I think. Edwards is going to be a one-club player now, I think. Pretty sure. Maxim Walter, up five. Out on loan again next year. McCloskey leaves us, of course, the Michelin. McDonald is a one-club player with his traits, so he'll stay, certainly. Ethan Martin now 71 up 14 this year, of course, with a uh, positional change. But 84 free kick accuracy might bring him into my uh, plans next year. 70 ball control and 64 dribbling, his only weak spots, really. If he improves there, he'd be very good. Lions might well be first team next season. Branco another loan. Schultz will continue on the right for now. He's obviously got the potential, so hopefully he can just continue to grow next season. Salinas peaked to 79, again hoping dynamic potential kicks in. Kai's been peaked for ages, and rather than buy another backup striker, like I say, I think I'll, I'll change uh, Vilk to striker and look to sign another centre mid. Uh, either for the first team, if there's someone that's of good enough quality to improve on, Samaras or Bustamante, because they're both peaked. If not, again, a, a backup to the two of them, but probably, hopefully, a first teamer. With regards to the youngsters we've still got at the club, still got plenty of potential in a number of them. Don't think I'm going to be rejecting anyone at this stage, but equally not calling anyone up at this stage either. So they will stay as they are, and I believe my youth scouts are still out searching for the time being in the three countries that they're looking at at the moment. So that will be us for this season. The brand new season will start tomorrow. And that will hopefully have some fantastic new kits in it. And hopefully we'll have some great uh, fan objectives as well. I will quickly run through the Patreon players list now for those that are interested. So do stick around for that, those of you that are involved in the Patreon. But for the time being, get my voice arrested in about 10 minutes time. And uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow for episode one of season six. So no... No more changes transfer-wise, but with regards to ratings, these will update, of course, on the uh, on the transfer list. Oh, sorry, on the spreadsheet once I, we get to the new season. But Jordan Forbes is up to 87. Ambrose now 85 at Fulham. 
And Will, now 86 at Newcastle, who's obviously played against us this season. Uh, I think played against James as well, actually, with Fulham. Uh, Sissoko would be my go-to right-back for next year, that we've mentioned a couple of times. Uh, Rob is up to 82 now at FC Curl. Connor, 82 as well. Tommy Wallace is up to 83. I do have a go-to centre-back if we want to sign someone, but we've got some youth prospects that come, should come through in that position. Uh, Karagumruk is still the destination for Nick and will be for the foreseeable future 83 rated. Romero, a potential go-to left-back, especially considering Palace got relegated now this season. Saar, mm, not sure about him now. Williams, 82 at Kludes. Again, don't think he'll be moving next year. Similarly, Dylan, although he's only just moved to uh, uh, Sosho this year. Daniel is at Valencia, still 84 rated. Millie, 85 at Selton. Dawson, 86 at Braga. Is available for transfer, though. Osorio is someone I could go for in midfield, although still not sure. Tommy White's now 87 at Wimbledon. Scott, 87 now at uh, West Ham as well. Brandon is 84 at Watford, who look like they might come up again if they're able to win the playoffs. AJ, 85 at Forest now in his first team for them. Lim, 87 still at Donny, of course. Manu, 84 at Leeds and he's available for transfer. Daz, 86 at Brighton now. Matthew Davison, 88 at Marseille. Aiden, 89 at Southampton. Jack, 87 at Sociedad. Puskas, 88 at Bilbao. Kyle doesn't look like he'll ever find his way out of LAFC, but we saw his loving life on the west coast of America. Barnes Cutter, 87 at Chelsea. And Colin is 84 at Conyersbourne. Did have a bid rejected by them for him from Everton in the January transfer window. So I'll update the ratings when we get to the new season. But that is how you all end this year. With regards to those of you that were in the Premier League, I can actually check your player stats. So if we have a look at uh, Brighton for Daz. Daz, four games only, unfortunately. One goal for him in the Premier League this season. Uh, Barnes Cutter at Chelsea. Uh, 16 games, one goal, two assists for you there. Do you have anyone, any uh, Arsenal, Villa or Brentford? I don't think so. Uh, Everton. Was someone at Everton? I don't think anyone was at Everton. Daniel was. I think he got the move to uh, Valencia, didn't he? Uh, Fulham. Uh, James, 26 games, two clean sheets in goal for Fulham. At Leeds, Manu. Five games, one goal, one assist. At Forest, AJ. AJ at Forest had 27 appearances, five goals, three assists. Then West Ham for Scott Underwood in the Premier League this year. 33 games, seven goals, four assists for Scott. Right. Let me rest my voice, please. I will see you guys in episode one of season six. Ta-da.